I'm going to talk about dealerships today and getting your car worked on. And some dealerships really suck. Uh, I used to have a, uh, a Dodge Intrepid a long time ago. I, I owned one. And I didn't, the Dodge dealerships really were bad. I got a lot of bad quality service from them and overpriced and it was really horrible. Now I, uh, I tried some other shops. Some like A lot of people are like, oh, don't deal with dealerships. They'll rip you off. Every, I hear so many people say that. And sometimes that's true, and sometimes it's not true. I had to get my car worked on today. I had to take it into the, the dealership and get my air conditioning fixed. I made a mistake, because I'm human. I made a mistake, and I left my e-brake off about six months ago at a gas station, and it, my car rolled pretty far and went over some curbs, and it was a real idiot mistake. I should have done that. And uh, messed up my air conditioning system and broke some, some pieces off the bottom of my car. So it cost me $1,500. It was a $1,500 mistake. Luckily, nobody was hurt or injured. And luckily, my car didn't wreck in with anything else other than boulders and curbs and stuff like that. My car was undamaged, so that was good. I got away with that. $1,500 is a good way. To, I could have been sued. I could have killed somebody. could have been way worse. That's a setback. Anyways, I like to go to my new dealership. I have a Volkswagen. I like to go to this Volkswagen dealership that I go to. I go to the same one every time. They treat me like a king. when I treat me like royalty. I love it. I love going there. Um, they have refreshments. Uh, they'll give me a shuttle ride to my house if I need it. You know, I can call them. I can schedule appointments. I can do whatever I need to do, and they're going to take care of me. The price is high. It's like $84 an hour for labor. Um, so and sometimes you have to pay for the parts. Uh, you know, when you order parts from, from a dealership, you have to pay for the parts up front. So I had to pay $800 for the parts. And now I'm, today I have to pay $500 when I pick my, pick my vehicle up. Now, if you go to these small shops... These small, like, kind of underground shops, you know, they, they might give you a better deal than a dealer, but they're not going to give you a ride home. You know, they're not going to, maybe they're not going to order the parts for you in advance, or you got to find the parts. Who knows? I mean, some, small shops are good, too. There's good, there's good small shops, and there's bad small shops. There's good dealerships, there's bad dealerships. I like the dealer. That's what I like to do. Ironically, I just made a video about small talk and trying to be accepted in new groups. I've been talking to this, uh, the guy that, the shuttle driver. He's a young kid. He's like 20 years old. He's uh, just fresh out of high school and a little bit of college, and he's trying to be a mechanic. And he really reminds me of myself when I was about his age. And he just he's uh when I, we've I've been I've been getting my car serviced quite a bit lately. So this guy keeps having to drive me home. So I the first time he drove me home, he he, he really did seem uh you know like he had the shell over him and and. Like, you're not going to penetrate my shell, you know? You're not going to be able to get me to loosen up. And uh, I was just making small talk with him on the ride home, trying to give him directions because, you know, where we're going, he didn't have a GPS or anything. And I was just trying to be kind of friendly with him. I could, I could tell he was struggling. And I asked him, how you know, how's mechanic going? Like, how, do you like it? And this and that. And he's like, he kind of opened up. I couldn't believe it. He actually opened up. And he was like, he's like, man, they they're mean to me and it's really it's a really hard job to learn and they don't want to teach me and they don't want to train me anything and I ask questions and they don't help me and and I, I really felt bad for the, for the kid and he's probably dealing with a lot of a lot of bullshit and I and uh I didn't give him any advice on that first on that first uh go around I just talked about I was opening up to him I what do I got to fucking hide right but on the second uh shuttle ride that I took today I was telling him about kind of, kind of like the content that I recently made about, you know, you should crack some jokes here and there. I mean, there's a time to be serious and there's a time to joke around a little bit. And I was telling him if, if you, if you're, I was like, you have a name, right? And he's like, yeah, my name is Jesus. I'm like, okay. So you're not just a mechanic, right? You're, you're a mechanic name. You're, you're Jesus the mechanic. You're, there's a person inside of, of that mechanic, right? Like you're not, all, you're not just just always turning the wrenches, right? Like there's something going on in your head, right? You're a person, you're a human being, right? And he's like, yeah, that kind of makes sense. And I told him, I said, uh, yeah, so open up a little bit, man. Even he's like, but some of these guys don't like me, and they're, you know, and I'm, I'm like, okay, well, what? They're giving you shit. Give them shit back. They drop a tool. Hey, pick up the, pay attention, Carlos. You know, tell them, man. Like they're gonna give you shit. I mean. Don't get fired, but I mean, you can we can push the edge a little bit, and they might like you more, you know. And 
I even told him, I was like, he's like, well, yeah, but this one guy, he, he, uh, he helps other people. He's really nice to them and helps them, but he doesn't, he's not like that with me. He told me I can ask for help, but he won't help me. I was like, well, that's called favoritism. And, and there's two things you can do to try to fix favoritism. You can address the issue one-on-one with the person that's, that's treating you unfairly. You can go right up to his face and just say, hey, man, what is your, what is your deal? What is your beef with me? What it is about me you don't like where you, you're going to fucking treat me like shit all the time. You can address it like that. That's a bold move to make. Um, be careful with that. And, uh, or you can just supersede his uh, superiority and go to the next higher leader that's above that guy. And then you can have a private discussion and try to get it fixed that way. He said he already tried that and it didn't work and he said nothing changed. I said, okay, well in that case, like I said, you have about two choices. You can address the guy that you got beef with. You can you can kind of joke on him a little bit and fuck with him a little bit back. That's what I would do personally. I would just joke with that dude back and try to fucking make fun of him, make him look, make him look stupid. You know, if he fucking has to take too many bathroom breaks or something, I would make jokes about that, you know. I just, they're trying to make you look stupid, so make them look stupid and make everybody laugh at them. And then, uh, I hate to say it, but that's kind of how you build respect for people. You, you build respect for working hard and learning your job and being the best at your job that you can be, and being faster than everybody else. That's how you earn respect. But you also earn respect by calling out your competitors and calling out the haters and not being a little bitch and just taking shit from everybody. If you do that in prison, you get killed. So... I said oh, that, or you can find a new job. You could, you know, you could turn wrenches in another place. Maybe they'll, they'll like you. Maybe you'll be on another team where they like you more. But good luck, man. Thanks for the ride. Peace. One.